next year. <laughs> this is probably my last year for doing so. Because I'm going to turn 70 in October. Careful. Yeah, I'm fall down. <laughs> but good evening, everyone. Now, you know, we, we know we've been doing PLP all the way. But I noticed that in this 50th anniversary, and the Prime Minister tried this out when he was speaking at the banquet. What did he say? 1492? Bahamas. It's the most amazing thing. I was at a basketball game at, uh, in Fox Hill on Friday night. And this song came on. They kept playing all night. And all the youngsters who were his age were singing this song. And uh, I thought, I, mean, I really love the song. Obviously, it's, it's caught fire in the country. Yes. Uh, I saw the young man who uh, performs it, wrote it, uh, performing it live on Zed Ness in Freeport a couple of days ago. And uh, all over the country. So it made it even to the Prime Minister's speech at the bank. Yes. And he started off, and everybody seemed to know it. So that's the new chapter, 1492 Bahamas. Bahamas. That's a Freeport to make one. Bahamas. Nice. Have a code in our group. Bahamas. <laughs> and it, it, what is it? It tells you how you can capture a feeling. And the political scientists will tell you that you can motivate people in one of two ways. You can either try and feel the logic you can move that emotion. And a political party's job is to mobilize people, to move them in one direction. Because a society can't go forward unless everybody agrees on an objective. And remember what, what I was saying is cooperation is important. Organization is important. Flexibility is important. And the way you organize is you could get up and you could give a logical set of arguments. Or, you remember the story of the Pied Piper? When, I don't know, do you know that story? The Pied Piper Hamlet who was able to get all the children to follow behind him by playing on a, on a flute or a piccolo. They marched, marched, left their parents and marched behind, behind him out of the village. So, the point I'm getting to is this. When I was in the Bermuda, Last week, representing the country at the independence celebrations for the country in the view. Uh, Lois Brown Evans, who was Sir Lyndon Billings' classmate at the University of London, came up to me. Her daughter, as Lois has gone, passed away, came up to me. And she said that she was 11 years old when her mother, who was the leader of the opposition in the view, took her siblings to Nassau to witness independence of the Bahamas. And she said, at 11 years old, she was quite cross because they didn't know why her mother was packing up to come down to Nassau about independence and any of that stuff. But she said, she remembered the excitement. And then she said this, she said, and I remember the song, Independence, Bahamas, Bahamas, Bahamas. And she sang the song. And she told me, and the group's name is Biosis Now, isn't it? So she was 11 years old. And she she's not from the Bahamas, she's wow. from the beauty. And she remembered that song. And I'm saying, the chances are the kids who are his age, 50 years from now, will remember 1492 Bahamas. Bahamas. More than any of the things we said on the platform or anything, that song will stick with them. So that, that uh, young man, and I, it's amazing how he just came up with it. That's how these things, how these things happen. Uh, they become a part of our history. And so we are here, again, trying to build on this history of Sir Henry Milton Taylor that was set in 1953, when these three men met in a private decided they were going to form something called the Progressive Liberal Party. And I'm not 
not sure that any of them knew that it would succeed to the extent that it did, and that it has. Because one thing you know also about politics is that you can never predict what's going to happen. No. Some people wrote about the fall of communism in Czechoslovakia back in the 1990s. And they said, like in February of that year, they went and demonstrated against the communist government of Czechoslovakia. And when they went out, nobody came. And the police came out and used tear gas and batons and scattered them to the four winds. Nine months later, they tried it again. November. And this time, the whole country turned out and the government was overthrown. Nobody knows what is the spot, what caused the difference between February and November. So when we were watching today the planning of Black Tuesday, when Sir Lyndon Pendling and his colleagues threw the base out of the window, and he said, or at least he told me, that one of the reasons they marched people Bay Street as soon as the Masons were thrown out the windows because he was 12 years old in Western Junior School when the riots took place in 1942. And they heard that the reason the riots started because there was a Coca-Cola truck parked on Bay Street and somebody took a bottle off the truck and threw it into a window and that started the riot. So when they were planning Black Tuesday, they determined that there was not going to be a riot, that they would demonstrate peacefully, and they marched everybody off the streets to the Southern Recreation Ground, where the demonstration ended. And when I was looking at somebody today on TV, he was saying a couple of things. He said that that demonstration on Black Tuesday demonstrated a couple of things. He said, first is, there was a myth that black people couldn't organize. Secondly, that black people were violent. Thirdly, that black people could not follow instructions. And he said, at the end of that demonstration, all of those myths were blown apart. Because it was organized, people were peaceful, and they followed instructions. And as you know, in 1967, the time turned. The question they asked today on the television was, why were, why were the leaders of the PLP prosecuted at the time? Now, Eugene DePuch, who was the Minister for Welfare under the UBP, told me that they didn't prosecute because they considered it a, polit a political act, not a criminal act. Arthur Folks said on the TV today that he thought they didn't because if they had acted, there would have been real unrest and violence in the country. So we have a very interesting history. And the man you put it all down to today is H.M. Taylor. And I want to tell you that his it looks easy looking back on what it did, but it wasn't easy. I told you the story of always being out of a job and not having money with the politics. But remember, in, after 1963, when he lost office as chairman of the party, there was a dispute between the leaders who succeeded him and himself. And that dispute lasted until 1978. And then all of a sudden the tide turned again. And, you know, Lyndon Pinnock was a remarkable man in many respects because Sir Henry Taylor worked as the director of the Hansard, which is the official record of the House of Senate. And he called me to his office when he was nearing retirement. And he said that he had gone to Sir Lyndon and asked him if he could provide my act of Parliament special pension. And he 
said, so Lyndon's response was, no, the government had gone as far as it could go, and he could stay on as long as he wanted as editor of Hans on. But after that, he, the government could go no farther. But as you see, it didn't turn out that way. Because several months later, so Lyndon appointed him Governor General of the Bahamas. And what did he do by appointing him Governor General of the Bahamas? Does anyone know the answer? You only have to serve one day as Governor General to get a country. One day. So, what they say is this, in the sound of music. When the good Lord closes one door, so I say to all the younger ones who are coming up, who worry about this or that, you know, the favorite question in the Bahamas now is, well, if I do this, am I going to get victimized? Uh, as they say, in for a penny or in for a pound. And you can't be half pregnant. No. So sacrifice is what happens when you decide to plunge into public life. And public life carries with it sacrifice and difficulties. So I'm happy all of you are here this evening because I've said this many times when I've spoken here in Long Island, to say how extraordinary you all are to be sitting in a midterm in Long Island, which is the hardest seat for the PLP to win. And you're all here listening to a message from the ambassador of the That makes you all extraordinary believers. Yes. And there's a hymn in the Anglican Church that says, the faithful few fought bravely to save the nation's life. The faithful few fought bravely to save the nation's life. And that's what you're engaging in. And so I want to thank you all. This morning I was showing my aides the airport that never was. The promise of this airport. And if you remember when I came here after, what was that, the 2017 election when you now got the representative you now have, and they had won the government with 34, 35 seats, remember, there were only five of us or four of us at the time. And I said to the people of Long Island, in every meeting I went to, I said, no, don't let them fool you this time. They have everything at their disposal. They have all the seats, so nobody can stand in their way. They have the, the lock and the key of the treasury. Long Island has voted for them every time, without fail, no matter who you send, Long Island votes for the FNM. So don't let them get away without building that airport before they leave office. And what happened? They got clean away. You voted for them again, and still no airport. Still no airport. So they left the state of the public works halfway. And I have a friend who is a priest who is, his family is from the village up on the side of the hill, uh, south of Clarence Town. I think it's called Dunn's. And he said, I was Greek people down there. But I said, you know, he said to me, we have to fix the road. But the Progressive Liberal Party has agreed to spend, I think, something like $30 million in the Long Island economy to fix the roads in this island. And that's a done deal. And don't be surprised if we're not the ones that have to finish the airport. No, no, no. Don't be surprised. The thing is, I don't want to go that far. Next thing you know, 
you'll be talking about me from the platform next time I come here and prophesy. But the airport is certainly on the cards. And so I want to just say those basic things, but I know that there's a lot which is on your minds as well. So I want to provide an opportunity as we usually do for a Q&A. So if people have comments, they don't have to be questions. If you simply have comments, I'd be happy to make a note of them, uh, answer them as best I can. And so that's what I'd like to do at this point. But thank you all. Welcome. Welcome to Sir Henry's family again. So thank you for allowing us. And, uh, and so I'll turn it over to you.